So let's assume you have some Jupyter Notebooks prepared for your classes and you would like to make them available to your students without having them to download everything setting up their own environment. So you want to run these through the internet and that's actually possible linking a GitHub repository with a so-called MyBinder uh, website which is basically a server that online allows you to run um, your Jupyter Notebooks um, just with access to the internet. So let's see how this works. So in this video we, we assume that you have downloaded um, Anaconda and created a Python environment so that you can run Jupyter Notebooks. You also need to familiarize yourself with uh, GitHub. There's many ways to do this. On Windows, um, which is what I'm using, Tortoise Git uh, is quite nice and I've made good experience with that. So let's assume we have locally some uh, Jupyter Notebooks. So basically from this moment uh, it's almost the same whether you're on a Linux or in a Mac or in a Windows environment. You go to the directory where you have your Jupyter Notebooks and um, you run uh, a Jupyter Notebook by typing Jupyter Notebook. So that opens up, takes a little while, it opens up a browser um, and you will now see your uh, notebook locally that uh, exists and you can open it and run it. In this case, this is a very simple uh, notebook that actually downloads data from a US server and plots it in this case. These are uh, data from the Tohoku earthquake 2011. Let's see whether it's uh, working. On the top right, you see if the dot is actually solid, then it's running. So here you can see the, the data are downloaded. So this doesn't help us uh, or your students to actually uh, run this. So what we do is now we create a new repository. On You do that on your uh, GitHub uh, account. We call it, let's call it My, Ju My Jupyter Notebooks. And uh, we initialize it with a readme file. That's good practice. And now we're creating a repository. The first thing we do is we download, we clone it down to our local machine. In this case, it, this would be my laptop. And uh, here we do this with Tortoise. And you see that this is actually the local uh, uh, folder where your repository now lives. So we now do this. This is now basically Git. We download it, we check whether it's there. Yes, uh, here on my Git uh, projects, there is now my Jupyter Notebooks as a new repository. There's nothing in there except for the readme file. And uh, let's create a structure here. We Let's say we ca call this notebooks. In this folder, there will be notebooks. And I may give a lecture on seismology, so I open a new directory called seismology. Now, let's fill this um, with one notebook uh, as an example that we have. So let's go back to the original notebook. Uh, let's download it um, or simply copy it into that directory. So we put it here in our notebook folder locally on our laptop. And um, so let's check whether it's there. This is our local repository. Yes, it is there. Now we need to uh, basically using Git language to push this up uh, on, on our Git re repository that then is uh, um, in the web. So we click here. Again, we do this in this case with Tortoise Git. Uh, we have to first commit it, basically saying this is what we want to uh, plan to upload. And then we actually have to push it. This is, uh, can also be done with uh, command lines, either on Windows, on Mac or on Linux. That's relatively easy. So this is now um, pushing our new folder structure up into our repository and our GitHub account. And let's see whether it's there. So we, this is our account. We have to reload it, of course. And then we see, yes, bingo, it's, it's all there. We check uh, in the repository, our notebooks are there. At the moment, we cannot run those. So that's just, there's a static. So uh, there's a, a few things we now have to do um, in order to actually link this with MyBinder. That's the next step. We have to create a new file that's called environment.yml. Um, so we open this. And now I copy this from a, a previous other project. You can do the same thing. 
It's very easy. So we edit this and we copy these few lines. This is the environment file and paste it into our local environment file. This actually, we, we give it a name. This is our, we can give it any name. This now basically uses Conda, installs Python 3, and OpSpy, which is a Python library for seismology. You can also remove that. Now we commit this, and there's uh, something else we need, and we go to the readme file. In order to link it then to a, a binder um, server, we need to add a line here that again we get from another repository. Um, so here we go. We open this uh, readme file in another repository. And this top line here looks complicated, but this we copy into our local um, readme file. And the only thing we need to change is the name of the repository here. So the, in this case, this is my Jupyter Notebooks. We save it. We save it. And now you can see that we have this uh, launch button here. Go back to the original. You can see that the launch button down here, which is what you um, provide to your students. And if you now click on it, now we do this for the first time. We connect to my binder. And it actually now, um, it will take quite a long time. This may take 10 minutes it creates all the dependencies of the environment that you want to you want to build so that takes takes quite a long time and uh, after it's done you will see something like this this is now and you see it at the uh, url this is now a uh, a server that lives on on the web um, and you can open your notebook and this is now run on a server provided by my binder you can check whether it's working Looking good. So again, we downloaded now the, the data and uh, we can work with this Jupyter Notebook. Let's, let's uh, now s start from scratch. Basically, let's delete these um, windows and go back to the original repository. Um, so this is now basically the link that you would provide to your students. Um, this is your uh, Git repository. You provide this link to your students. And they would now come here, click on this uh, uh, launch binder uh, button, and it would open. And that goes now very quickly once it's once the Docker uh, has been built. Um, it now opens your your notebook library. It usually takes can be take a, up to a, a minute or sometimes a couple of minutes. Uh, so here we go. Now you have your notebooks, and uh, this is now let's say exemplary so that you provide this to your students um, they can now run it let's see whether it works again so we activate it we run it it downloads the data takes a while and plots them okay all good and now, for example, give a task, uh, download the Sumatra data instead of the Tohoku data. So they have to get the students would have to get the origin time. Um, and the only thing you need to change here is uh, basically the initialization of the UTC universal time when the earthquake happened. This was in 2004 in December 26 uh, at uh, 0058 around that time. And then the rest of the statement here says, basically, download 10 minutes after the origin time plus 100 minutes after the origin time. You see the uh, seismic is much longer. Let's uh, extend it to 200 minutes. Um, run it again. And here you go. You have 200 minutes or, um, uh, of, of data. So basically, that's it. It's relatively easy. And once you're there, you can now basically fill your local repository, the local directory on your machine, whether that's Linux-based or that's uh, Mac-based, Windows-based. You can fill it with uh, Jupyter Notebooks and basically organize your GitHub repository. But whenever you provide the link to your local GitHub, to your actually GitHub repository on the web, students only have to click on this link and the MyBinder 
uh, a website basically then opens the entire repository and students can um, work with these notebooks, extend them, change them and for example after they, they've done some, some work on those notebooks download them locally for them to keep them and, and run them. That's it. I can see clearly now the rain has gone I can see all obstacles in my way I 